Okay, so whatever language you're learning or trying to learn, whatever method you're learning, the process is always the same. You're, you're literally always doing the same thing, okay? Now, I think a lot of people, like 99% of people don't know what to do. And so they look at these videos of how to do, how to learn this language, how to learn Japanese, how to learn Thai, how to study, all of that. But do you actually know what is happening in your brain? What is language? How does it enter the brain? How does it shape your connections? So right from the start, when you're a baby, you have nothing. You don't have a brain and you don't have language, right? And that's important because these two things go hand in hand together because the brain is formed with the language. As you're listening to language, your brain is being developed. So everything that you expose yourself to, everything that you experience, there is language to go with that always when you're a baby. Over the years, language is coming in, it's coming in, and then your brain is starting to make sense of it. It's guessing around, it's guessing the context that, you, that the language is in, and it's making connections, all right? And at some point, when this language has formed in your brain, your perception of the world has formed. And there's a reason why I call this your perception of the world, because that's really what language is, is one way of seeing the world. Because in my opinion, language is really just like a lens. It's a way to see the world, right? It's a lens. The language is there and your perception of the world has formed. Your brain has formed, right? Your conscious brain, I guess, and your native language is there. So first there was nothing. Now you have a native language and you have a fully functioning brain. All right, that's very important. So when you're a baby, right, you don't have anything. You have a brain, but it's still developing. Your consciousness is developing, your brain is developing. But during this time, you're being exposed to the language, right? This language is being processed in the brain and it's growing. Like all this language is coming in, it's getting bigger and bigger. And your brain is trying to make sense of it. Um, it's trying to give that language a meaning using that context, right? The language is forming, but also your brain itself is forming like a consciousness is forming, you know. At first your brain didn't know like, what, what is this world? What are these things, these people? What is all of this? Throughout the years, your perception of that world has formed and the language that was part of that context, right? Has also been absorbed by your brain and it's inside. So this is where you're a native speaker. This is me right now when I speak Dutch. Now, let's say you're learning a new language. Okay, so let's take Japanese for example, in my case, I'm learning Japanese, but Japanese is very different from Dutch. As you can see here, I have drawn two different um, shapes. This is Dutch, it's a round shape. This is Japanese, it's a, a star, right? Because the languages are different. But not only the languages are different, the cultures are different. And this is more important. This is the most important thing. Because the cultures are different, the language is in the culture, right? And the culture is in the language. So what I mean by that is everything that I was exposed to in my native language, in Dutch, has been in my country, in my culture, seeing the things the Dutch people do, uh, hearing the things the Dutch people say, always in the context of Dutch culture. Japanese people are different from Dutch people, obviously. Therefore, they do different things. They say different things, they behave differently, and that is uh, represented in the language. So when a Japanese baby listens to that language, the language is different. It has different patterns, different things, and the way they do things is different, right? Now, what happens when I try to learn Japanese? Most people do this, okay? They take a word or a concept in Japanese. Let's say this, hong. Kore wa hong desu ne, hong. And they say, oh, I know that, that's book. This is a book. And now they draw the conclusion that since I know that this is book, I have now, I have now learned some Japanese. This is book, hong equals book. That is not learning the language. That is not knowing the language because what you're doing is you're taking this concept in Japanese, hong, and what ends up happening is you see the language through your own lens, through this brain that you have already formed. And then it will look like this. You see that circle in the, in the star? Your view of the language is inside the other language. So I have some colleagues that speak Russian. And sometimes when I meet somebody who speaks Russian, I like to say, oh, I know some words. I know um, Strasvutje and uh, Kaktjela, um, Dasvidanie, for example, but I don't know the language, but I know these words, but do I really know these words? No, I, I just know how to say them. I know what they mean. I know that Strasvutje means hello, but what I'm really doing is I'm saying the word and I'm translating it into my own view of the world as, hey, that means hello. Every language, and depending on how different it is from your native language, has things that you cannot translate, these things cannot be translated. You cannot put them into this mold of your own view of the world. So what is actually knowing the language? How do you get fluent? How do you not simply translate the word, but actually 
internalize the word. Basically what you have to do is create this whole brain that you have formed when you were a baby, but do it again. Do it again in another context with another language with, lang with Japanese. In this case Japanese because you know Japanese as an example. Instead of looking at the language and then extracting things from it and putting it into your own view of the world in your native language, you have to observe the language and make these connections again right from the start, just like a baby would do. Now, so if you look at a Japanese baby and uh, a Dutch baby or an English baby, let's take English as an example, both of these babies, in both of these languages, we have this thing, right? This thing called book, this concept. So, so you know, there's paper and uh, on the paper there are characters written on it, right? Like this. Now that is true in both languages, but there are also things that are not similar in the language. Um, I can give you examples, I can say, well, in Japanese, the sentence order is different. In Japanese, you use these particles. Uh, in Japanese, you don't say the pronoun as often. Things like that. And that's why I represent these things in a different shape, right? How do you internalize that language? How do you stop translating the language? How do you form that new brain in your mind so that you can switch to the other language? For example, right now, als ik wil, kan ik naar Nederlands switchen en kan ik in een andere taal spreken. Maar wat er ook gebeurt is dat ik nu een andere persoon ben. Oké, okay, ik ben een heel ander gedeelte in mijn brein aan het gebruiken. En normally I, I use English when I do this, because it's just in the context of making videos, I always use English. It's a different person, different personality, different connections, different brain, right? How do you change these connections in your brain, right? How do you go from this English brain to your Japanese brain? And the answer is simple. What you want is this. You need to open up your brain. Instead of seeing this thing and saying, oh, that is a book, no, this is Hong. This is Hong and this has always been Hong. What makes first language acquisition different from second language acquisition is that when you are a baby, you have nothing. You have nothing to start with. You have no brain, you have no language, you have nothing. And as you hear the language, your brain, your perception of the world is being formed. But now, when you try to learn another language, you always revert, rely on this first language. You do it from this first language. But that's not what you want, right? Because if you truly want fluency, then you want to be able to get rid of that other language. Get rid of your native language and just no longer rely on it. You want to be able to switch to this language whenever you want and see the world through this view, through this language. So you have to recreate all of those connections that you made, all these sounds that you are not familiar with. You have to listen to them and associate them with concepts that only exist in this new language. And that takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of time and dedication. <laughs> because why would you do that again, right? The world has already been, your perception of the world has been formed. Your, your brain is already kind of developed. So why would you go through that process again? It doesn't make sense. That is why first language acquisition and second language acquisition are so different, right? But we can kind of imitate this process. The most important thing is you have to open up to the language. When you hear something in your target language, you hear it, you make a guess in your head. You think, hmm, okay, so this, maybe they're doing this, they're doing that. But you can't say, oh, it means that, it means this, because then you're going back to your native language. And you don't want to refer to rely on this native language, you want to, you want to create a whole new set of connections, a whole new lens. So listen to the language, expose yourself to the language and make these connections. Listen to the language in context, and as you see and as you listen and as you feel or whatever, just make a guess of what's going on, okay? Try to be that baby again and to make a guess about what's, what's going on around you in the world. Where is this language being used? Why is it being used? And just observe and make these connections. So to summarize, when you're a baby, you have nothing. You have no brain, no language. Um, but through exposure, your view of the world is forming. Within the language, you're listening to language all day, you're seeing things, you're experiencing things. And so through the language, you are forming a perception of the world through a lens that we call Dutch or English or whatever your native language is. Then as your native language has developed, you're trying to learn another language, but don't make the mistake of translating. Don't say that in Japanese or that in Thai or that in German means this or it means that, because then you're just translating it to your old, to your old vision of the world. That's not what you want. You want to create a whole new set of connections, expose yourself to the language and then make new connections so that eventually when this whole new network of connections has been formed, you can turn off your old brain and boom, go to your new brain, your, your target language and think in that language. 
And that is fluency. Now, when you can actually do that, you can learn even more, right? You learn new things in English every day, right? Using English. Now, the goal should be to no longer have to rely on your old language because now you can think in a new language, in your target language, and you can use that to snowball, to learn even more words, and you can simply live life in this new language. And that is fluency. When you can let go of this old language, these old ideas, these old ideas, old concepts that you have, and you can transition to another language, think in that language, communicate and, and have thoughts in this language, then I think you are fluent in the language. Now, how do you do that? You can watch tons of videos about methods and all of that, and all of it will work, but fundamentally, right? Language is always spoken. So you have to listen to the language. Whatever you're doing, whatever context you put yourself in, listen to the language and have your brain make sense of that. Because then you can create associations with these sounds and the things, the context that they're in, right? Now, I like this idea of M plus one. So if you expose yourself to language, new language, and you understand 90, 95% of it, then you can guess through context what this other 5% means. And then you're learning, you're learning language in the language, right? If you do that for long enough, then you will learn the language. Let me know what you think and um, I'll see you in another video. Bye-bye.